Isabella, welcome to Strasbourg. Thank you. You come with your first feature of film, uh, Holiday. Uh, I must say that Holiday kind of feels like a Greek tragedy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like you, you know there is no way it's going to end a different, in a different situation. Yeah. Do you agree with this? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do like the classical dramas very much. Okay. And I like something that's sort of moving inevitably towards its logical consequence. You know. Though it's not a really passionate movie, we watch things happening from a distance. Mm. Uh, were you conscious of this? Of course, yeah. yeah. I, I have a, a sort of a, um, almost um, um, anthropological view to looking at people. Like, I, I prefer to look at people in a group and almost like a dance. Yeah. Like some ants under a microscope. And a big, partly because that's what interests me, but partly for political reasons, because I believe, like, in the whole Brechtian left wing uh, art theory, that if you go too much into psychology, you're just exploiting five basic emotions like fear, hate, love, and, and so on. And you don't really say anything other than, oh, here comes the bad guy, oh, and save the day, you know, and you come out of the movie and you've learned nothing. So that's one reason why I like to take a step back and look at the bigger picture. I, I think this way the audience feels uh, a bit more safe also. In, with my film? Well, think? Um, yeah, being, in a, being mm, at some distance, not being so much implicated in the... <laughs> that's not the reaction I've been getting, though. Okay. And people are very emotionally involved, yeah. actually. So safe is not the word I'd use. Uh, maybe it more intellectualizing, uh, more they're thinking more than feeling maybe, but they're also feeling a lot. At least the people I've been talking to. Yeah. So uh, when we see your movie, we were thinking about other like uh, cold and distant directors like Ulrich Seidel or uh, Michael Haneke. Uh, were were they references you had in mind? Mm, yes, I, I mean, of course, I mean, Seidel is a, is a key reference and it's very obvious. Yeah. He's the director that's maybe shaped me the most. But there are a lot of other references in there, including Bergman, all the mirror shots and people looking, you know, uh, at, at themselves. And, and uh, you have some Carlos Regadas in there and uh, Roy Anderson. There are a lot of in, in different inspirations from different bands. But I do love. I do love the way Seidel looks at people and, and I also like, I like how political Seidel and Haneke both are, you know, that's, oh, ruthlessness has a political goal, you know. Exactly. And uh, for the uh, anthropology, uh, were you influenced by the way like Martin, Martin Scorsese approached gangsters from also observing their... Maybe a little. I mean, uh, I, you know, I, I don't really, I'm not really a big fan of American films, so to be honest, I'm not sure exactly which movies Scorsese has made. Uh, uh, <laughs> Did he make Scarface? Scarface? No, no, no. no. This is Scarface is almost more of a, a comedy, an opera, so... I, Scarface more than anything. Okay. Uh, because of the whole selling your soul to the devil theme. Uh. Yeah. And... Uh, how, uh, as a writer, how do you write such uh, a despicable character as Michael? Uh, because most because of... Because I think he's sexy. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and I think that's something that maybe sort of splits the audience a little bit. A lot of guys, they just think he's terrible. But a lot of people who are attracted to men uh, see the double-sidedness of it. Uh, he's really, he's dynamic, he's powerful, he's cool. He's got a lot to offer. And that's like one of the basic issues, you know. He he does, he does have power, and everybody's attracted to power, men and women, you know. Yeah. On the other side, the average man, uh, impersonated by the Dutch guy, uh, would almost seem like a coward. And he so is. Unsexy. He is a coward. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So that's the, the issue. Yeah. Um, Thomas, the normal guy, he represents so-called polite society. And polite society is a fucking coward, you know. You see people, you know, walking by uh, as people are being mugged and, and, you know, not listening when the third world needs our money and, and help, you know. So, 
and and especially per personally for Sasha, for the main character, she's she's thrown out of polite society. She's not welcome there, so she really doesn't have much of a choice. Yeah. And uh, coming back to Michael's character, uh, do you think when you write a character like this, you have to find something like you have to like him in some way? You said he, he was sexy. No, I like, like him. No. He mm -hmm. reminds me very much of my father. And uh, you, if you look at my previous films, you will see the sim similar stories. It's, it's about the issues of, of, of a feeling of powerlessness in the face of this big authority guy, man, that you also love, you know. And, and it's, it's, it's something that is very, is, is, is a problem in society because, like I said, we all kind of think power is really attractive. So we let these psychopaths rule us. Even though we know we shouldn't, they're everywhere. You know, nobody's doing anything about it. <laughs> well, we can start doing things about it. Your movie is released uh, yeah. the year of the big uh, Me Too movie. Exactly. So, so Weinstein took a fall, and that's good. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, I think people in the audience will think a lot about. Uh, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, that yeah. kind of stories when yeah. they see your movie because yeah. it's the. Uh, it's not often you see a woman, uh, a woman director, showing uh, a character being so submissive mm. for all the movie, a woman character yeah. under men. Yeah. There's this idea that we should have strong female characters to be feminist and empowering, but it, to my mind it's more feminist to have a complex female character. So. But it's, it's a stage, you know. Women just recently came into filmmaking, you know, it's been so male dominated, you know, we don't even almost have any, any, all, all, you know, the only women I know that actually made film back in the days, they're all French for some reason, yeah. you know, Catherine Priat and Claire Denis, uh, those are basically my only two female role models. Um, so, so it's, it's all new and of course, baby steps, first you're going to make the, you know, politically correct movies and maybe then you can make the more complex ones. Can you tell us a word about the actress playing Sasha? Victoria. Uh, yeah. Victoria. She uh, has she done many films in Denmark? No, Victoria is only 23, so okay. she just came out of theater school, and but she's all she's like everybody knew she was going to make it big. She's really, really talented, very intelligent, very intuitive. Uh, so she starred in like three or four movies basically at the same time. So mine happened to be the first, but there are three more coming up. And she's been my, uh, smaller parts in several other films and in a lot of short films as well. So she's really, she's gonna be, she's gonna be there to stay. Uh, I think yeah. so also, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the movie is now invited to uh, genre film festivals. Yeah. Uh, would you imagine Not this so one? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Were you imagining this? when you were doing the movie, that it would be uh, assimilated to genre? I didn't think about it, uh, okay. but and, and, I don't know. It's not important. I don't see it as a genre film at all. I see it as a classic art house movie. Uh -huh. But that's fine, you know, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a gangster, thriller, art house drama. That's, um, a, yeah. Yeah. That's a good way to define it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and uh, we have this crossover section that al allows us exactly. to show. So it's perfect kind of for that kind of section. I think the audience is going to agree with you, sincerely. Okay. Thanks a lot for we'll your see. answers. Thank you very much. Thanks.